Hi everyone, I'm going to be showing you a Sony digital camera today. But not any particular type of Sony digital camera, I'm going to be showing you the Sony FD Mavica. Which is really unique in its own way. From 1997 to 2001, Sony produced these cameras in different variations. Why is this particular series of camera I think is interesting? Well, it doesn't use either of these. No SD card, micro SD card or such, or compact flash media storage. It uses floppy disk. Oh, yummy. This particular camera was produced in 2001, so it's towards its later end of its use. And you might be asking, how's the image quality since it uses a floppy disks? Well, the image quality is decent. I'm actually re I actually took photos and used them onto my Facebook profile when I first got this camera and just played around with it. And most people couldn't tell the difference from the naked eye when I used the camera that I'm recording on and set it down to its lowest resolution, which is 1280 by 960, which is the highest resolution that this camera can support. Most people couldn't tell, except it was a little bit more grainy when you really zoomed into it. Like, you can zoom into my newer camera's photos a little bit more than that camera's. Which most, and it's mostly because this is a 3 megapixel, or 3.1 megapixel uh, camera, while the other one was like a 6. So, I, that's where you're going to see the difference. On top of that, it can only store up to six photos on its highest resolution, and on its low resolution, the lowest it supports, which is 640 by 480, it can store up to 12. And you might be asking, well, that's a little impractical. Well, at the time that this camera was being made, and the type of culture it was in the early to late 90s into the early 2000s, people carried around camera bags which would have their films, camera equipment, and such other things. So it really wasn't impractical to carry a small collection of floppy disks with you with this camera. It wasn't that impractical and the battery life actually lasted quite significantly even though it has a motor and a read and write head for the uh, floppy disk mechanism inside. And you might be asking, well, is floppy disk the only thing it takes? Can it take any kind of flash memory? Well, it can. What, what was out there for this camera as an additional accessory item is that you have a, uh, a floppy disk adapter, which was probably a piece of plastic with some wires inside, and the memory card will actually slide into here. And then inside the mechanism of the floppy disk drive, there would be the connections for the flash memory, which was the um, Sony's proprietary memory sticks. This, this camera is equipped with a 6x zoom with Sony's custom lens assembly, which actually makes it really practical, at the same time impractical. It's a little hard to explain, but it just, it seems like the images are not um, proper size when you're looking at it through the LCD. That might be because of the LCD on the back of this camera, but it just seems kind of off-centered. Which brings me to, this camera does not have any viewport like the older cameras of its time, or the current cameras. There's still current cameras that still have viewports. You have to see what your camera's seeing through the LCD screen that was provided onto the back. And this camera is functional. Ta -da! And then the way to eject your floppy disk, you just do the little thing and that, and slide it in. It will say read disk. This camera was capable of doing multiple different types of shutter types and adjusting the sense, the photo sensor inside. Like on many modern cameras, you can change the um, 
programming. So it would do portrait or scenery or nighttime. And it had a really good flash on it, which you can turn it on and off with the button right there. Now you might be asking, well, these floppy disks, are they, once you put them into this camera, could you put them into your PC? Well, yes, that was kind of the concept. This camera actually formats disks in an IBM standard. So as long as a machine was able to read an IBM standard disk, it should be able to display the file. Now opening the file, you would need to require a machine that would be able to understand a JPEG image. So this camera is actually compatible with any IBM PC system or Macintosh that supported a IBM disk et in its drive, which I actually played around with this. I was able to get to open up photos from a you know, Windows 95 system and I was also able to get it to open up photos on Windows or Mac Mac OS 9 on an old Mac with the uh, diskettes inside. So I was able to actually put photos back and forth through there like that. And you might be surprised about something. This camera is still using something that most of our modern technology still needs. This type of battery that Sony produces. This battery is still used in a lot of their Sony equipment. I'm not sure if it's still being used like in the brand new products released now, but they're still producing these batteries. And there's a lot of third party and Sony chargers out there. And I got this one from China. Uh, it was like three bucks because I didn't know the camera worked or not. But this battery is still functional. It still stores quite a bit of juice. I can run this camera for quite a bit of time which is kind of unexpected for something so old. Usually these kind of uh, batteries degrade over time even if they're sitting too long. As you can see this camera comes with a lens cap tethered to it. And the nice thing I liked about it is that it has the oops, Sony um, shoulder strap. And that's all my time today, so thanks for watching my video. Um, please stay tuned for any new and interesting items I'd like to show you. So thanks and happy.